Hello, I'm back. Um, welcome to my channel. And we are going to talk about coronary angiogram. Uh, maybe you're wondering why I'm wearing scrubs and I'm lying on the bed. It's because I'm at work at the moment. I'm on a 24-hour shift. I'm on call. And while waiting for um, for any primaries that might come in, um, I figured I can probably record a, a video for this channel <laughs> and uh, and we're going to talk about coronary angiogram so a coronary angiogram is uh, a special type of procedure done in the cath lab to radiographically view the arteries of the heart using an x-ray machine and the injection of a dye uh, this generally helps cardiologists determine if there are any narrowings or blockages in the heart uh, sometimes this procedure is called uh, cardiac catheterization because we use um, intravascular catheters that might go into your wrist or to your groin um, in order to access the coronary um, vessels. Um, usually this procedure takes about 20 to 30 minutes or an hour depending if they want to get more um, information or data from the patient so they might do pressure wire studies or uh, intravascular ultrasound so they use separate wires to to uh, measure the vessels okay so once the patient is already on the table placed comfortably on the operating table the team gathers around and do a safety checklist um, so we'd ask the patient's full name, date of birth, and the hospital number, and we double check the labs of the patient, check the hemoglobin, the creatinine, um, check if the patient signed the consent and confirm it in front of the patient, if the patient really signed the form. And also we check for allergies, we check the patient's pulse, and then um, along with the team, we connect the patients to a monitor. Normally the technician, the physiologist would connect the patients to a monitor. Um, uh, we check for uh, IV access in case uh, there's emergency. Um, we have an access wherein we can give emergency drugs. Um, and also the materials that the operators would need. Um, so how, how do we go about the coronary angiogram procedure? So, so of course we need an angiogram pack. This is, the contents of this are sterile. So we use this pack to create a sterile field. So inside we've got sterile drapes, basins, um, gallipots, blades, syringes, needles, um, giving sets, uh, kidney basin. Um, yeah, so these are the basic stuff we need for both coronary angiogram and coronary angioplasty and also other cat lab procedures. Um, we've got other um, packs for other kinds of procedures such as pacemaker, uh, um, ILR, expand or implant. But right now we're going to focus on the uh, angiogram, coronary angiogram. So what are the things we need to add when we open up the coronary angiogram pack? We have, of course, the sheet. Of course, we need to establish access to put in the catheters. So if you're not familiar with the uh, uh, parts of the sheath, We've got here, uh, this is the sheath. This is a six French sheath, by the way, radial sheath. And then this is the dilator, a needle. From the sheath, you've got the side tube and the three way stop cup, a three way connector. And then um, and the circular tube has a wire in it. And then this one is also a six French sheath, but it's for femoral access. Uh, the difference is, is that. The femoral axis doesn't have um, a needle in it. Uh, they need a bigger needle, so we use this. Uh, we call this a chemo needle. Alright, so we prepare this one by flushing it with a hepsilene solution. So in, in our hospital, for the saline solution, we put in 1,000 uh, units of heparin to a 1 liter bag, 500 units for a 500 ml bag. Um, of course, we need to prepare the medications as well. Uh, so we, can, we cannot just, just prick the patient with a needle. So we need to prepare lidocaine 2%. Um, 
and also um, for the cocktail if it's a radial cocktail to prevent spasms if it's in a radial approach we prepare usually 3,000 units of heparin mixed with um, Everapamil 2.5 uh, milligrams um, but um, heparin should always be based on the weight um, correct me if I'm wrong but I think it's 50 international units per kilogram uh, so if let's say I'm 90 kilos so nine, uh, 50 times 90 so that should be the amount of heparin that we should prepare for the cocktail uh, also we prepare nitrates um, so one milligram of nitrates to uh, to mix with the hep saline to make it 10 uh, 10 mils so it it can be a one is to one so 100 microgram per mil all right so those are the medi basic medications we need for the procedure and of course we jump into the catheters so catheters i've got here prepared two catheters basic catheters that we use for a coronary angiogram we call this uh, jr4 Jud or judgkins right and uh, jl35 so jl35 we use this for the left system so you expect that we can uh, see the left anterior descending and the circumflex the cor major coronary vessels in the heart on the left system so you see here that the catheter will look like this yeah this and on the other hand we've got here um the jr4 for the right catheter will look like this okay so once the doctor we also flush this by the way with hep saline so a two mil syringe and flush it so we do not want to introduce air to the uh, patient system so how do we uh, put the catheters to the sheet so once the sheet is already in um, we make use of a j wire put this tip here in the catheter and once it is already um, placed we place the tip of the catheter inside this the, the sheath and then from there the everybody should be uh, wearing their lead gowns because the radiographer will start to screen the doctor will start to screen and they'll try to push the catheter towards the heart so that they can intubate and of course we've got the manifold of course the manifold looks like this so we connect this stuff so basically if you if you can see from here i don't know if it's visible but there are three ports three three-way ports one is for the contrast one is for the hep saline um, and the other one is for um, collecting blood or giving medication so anyway so we prepare this one and this will serve as the syringe connected with this will serve as a way to introduce contrast to through the catheter and to your heart so we can visualize it if that makes sense <laughs> so I, that's it so those are the things we we need for a coronary angiogram and once we have uh, um, done the coronary angiogram pictures so the doctors will discuss if they're going to proceed with uh, percutaneous coronary intervention if, if the doctors are are happy with the pictures and they establish that there's no narrowing on the coronary vessels um, they're going to stop with the procedure and uh, remove the sheath and we've got two closing devices um, if it's in the radial sheet we've got here a PR band or trans radial band yep so here you have the syringe where we inject air from this band it goes here on the wrist um, to impede um, uh, blood circulation but at the same time there's patent hemostasis wherein you know that there's still blood flowing from here despite the restriction of blood for you to prevent bleeding and also we have your angio seal and six french angio seal if it's to 
the groin, um, groin axis or femoral axis. Coronary angiograms are generally safe, but the occurrence of complications is just less than 1%. The risks are bleeding, infection, irregular heart rate, um, bruising or hematoma, and stroke can happen as well. Um, yeah, and those are the things that we have to watch out for when we are about to discharge. So um, what should we advise patient after a coronary angiogram? If it's a radial approach, advise patient to go home and rest and support the hand we're in when they get the angiogram with a pillow and make sure that it's comfortable and elevated. Um, it is advisable for them not to use uh, the hand with heavy work and put pressure on the uh, hand where they did the angiogram. Um, advice not to drive for at least three to four days. And when it comes to wound care, they can remove the plaster after 24 hours of the procedure and just put a band aid over it. And make sure do not shower for four to five days or have a bath or swim to prevent infection. Um, yeah, and if there's bleeding, um, elevate the arm, press for 15 minutes. If the bleeding doesn't stop, then seek for medical help. You should also seek medical help if your hand feels uh, very painful, if there's swelling and numbness or the color changes into white or blue. If it's in the groin, it is expected that there will be slight swelling and bruising on the area. So it is imperative for us nurses to instruct patients not to uh, ambulate like their normal activity on the first day after a procedure. Um, only walk if, if it's only necessary, like if it's going to the toilet or walking around the house. Um, they can resume with their normal activities the next day but prevent activities that might cause them to uh, have bleeding like uh, uh, lifting heavy objects or running so they should prevent doing those things if they had an angiogram femoral approach after the patient has been discharged and if they suddenly feel like there's chest pain they should stop what they're doing rest and then have a gtn spray um, if the pain persists, then, then they should seek medical attention. And if we know that the patient had a sedation, let's say they had fentanyl or midazolam during the procedure, um, three things that should be um, remembered or advised to the patient is uh, they should not drive for the next 24 hours, no alcohol, and they shouldn't sign any legal documents for the next 24 hours. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from it. If you got any questions, that don't hesitate to write them below. And if uh, you need to clarify something, don't hesitate to message me. I've got my social media channels posted at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.